Atomic absorption spectroscopy is an analytical technique which is helpful to explain the nature of components present in the given unknown mixer. It is purely based on Beer's law. Beer's law states that the absorbance of radiation is directly proportional to concentration of analyte and transmittance of radiation is inversely proportional to concentration of analyte. Instrumentation of atomic absorption spectrometer. This is black diagram of atomic absorption spectrometer. This is consist of source of radiation, filter, sample holder provided with atomizer and the detector which is a, a photoelectric diode. Let us see a brief regarding the component of the instrument. Here the atomizer is helpful for atomization of the sample because in atomic absorption spectroscopy the targeting entities are atoms of the components present in the mixer. So atomization takes place in atomizer. This is called as atomization unit. Source of radiation. A monochromatic or polychromatic radiation generated by using a lamp. Photometric measuring system. A device which detect the wavelength of emitted radiation. Here, the most important component in atomic absorption spectrometer is atomizer. Here, there are several types of atomizers, that is flame atomizers, electrochemical atomizers and specialized atomization techniques. The oldest and most commonly used atomizer in AAS are flame atomizers. Here flames can be generated in two means that is air acetylene flame and nitrous oxide flame. These are the schematic representations of flame atomizers and electrothermal atomizers. Here let us see the components in detail present in an atomizer. So based on the availability and based on the uh, nature of uh, instrument, we can use either of these atomizers. Radiation sources. Here line source atomic absorption spectroscopy and continuum source atomic absorption spectroscopy can be classified on those manner based on radiation sources. Usually hollow cathode lamps and electrodeless discharge lamps, deuterium lamps used for line source atomic absorption spectroscopy. When you go for Continuum source atomic absorption spectroscopy, xenon lamps are widely used. Let us see the halo cathode lamps. Schematically, here the halo cathode lamps are visualized. Here, and another electrodeless discharge lamps. Electrode-less discharge lamps are also shown here. 
Electrodeless discharge lamps is con contains a quartz window. Through this window, the radiation will comes out. These two radiation sources used for line source atomic absorption spectroscopy. Let us see the xenon arc lamps which are used for continuous source AAS that means continuum source atomic absorption spectroscopy. Here let us see the schematic representation of xenon arc lamp. So here the xenon gas is to be kept in between the electrodes and it get ionized and excited and ionized and during the de-excitation it will release the radiation. As we have discussed earlier, the another important component is detector. So, usually detector is also to be considered as photometric measuring system. Here, the detector can measure absorbance of radiation and transmittance of radiation by determining the intensity of radiation. Let us see the schematic representation of detector. Here, this is purely based on photoelectric effect. As the radiation targeted on the surface of cathode, then the electrons will be released. Based on the number of electrons released, the intensity of radiation can be determined. The principal parts of a detector is cathode, anode, and which receives the receiving the radiation, a detector is uh, most important in case of atomic absorption spectroscopy. Here the spectrometers for line source atomic absorption spectroscopy. Line source atomic absorption spectrometer is provided with a narrow line emission of the radiation source and pass between 0 0.2 and 2 nanometers that is a sodium resolution monochromator. Here monochromator means which can filter the radiation with the desired wavelength from polychromatic radiation. Spectrometers for CS AAS. Here the radiation source is to be considered as continuum radiation source and the monochromator simply has to resolve the analytical line from other radiation emitted by the lab. Here high resolution monochromator can be used. The most important factor in atomic absorption spectroscopy is background absorption and background correction. Here, when uh, undesired wavelengths get absorbed or get transmitted, we have to encounter several problems. So, those problems 
can be rectified by correction. These interferences categorized spectral interferences, chemical interferences. Spectral interferences is comes under instrumental interferences. Chemical interferences is to be considered the unknown mixer. Background correction in line source atomic absorption spectroscopy. Here, all of background interruptions based on two sequential measurements. Total absorption, background absorption. Here, the techniques used for these corrections are deuterium background correction, smith heisey background correction, Gemman effect background correction. Instrumentally, these uh, interferences can be rectified. Background correction techniques for high resolution continuum source atomic absorption spectroscopy. The background correction here can be done as follows. These can short out only by mathematical methods. Software using information from detected pixels that are not used for measuring atomic absorption, hence in contrast to line source atomic absorption spectroscopy. This is interpretation in atomic absorption spectroscopy in graphical format. Let us see a plot drawn between absorption and concentration of the analyte. Here, as we observe, the intensity of absorbance, I mean, the amount of light get absorbed is linearly, linearly increases with the concentration of analyte. Finally, a calibration plot can be drawn from the result. So here, the absorptivity and concentration of analyte is to be considered as criteria. Let us see, as we have calculated these by the equation y is equal to mx plus c. The curve has interrupt, intercept on y axis. So from this, we can calculate how much of radiation get absorbed during the experiment and how much of radiation coming out from the uh, sample. By calculating the wavelengths or frequencies of the both radiations, we can get the information regarding the component present in the unknown mixer. Thank you.